step is make sure you pick the right weather pattern. You don't want to get stuck in lightning up there. Here we go. Q&A time. Q&A time. Thanks for being here. Video number two publishing today. Let's roll. Lots of questions from all of you. I'm going to try and go a little faster these days, you know, as I, as I just try to be as efficient as possible with your time. Question of the day, should I consider turning this weekly Q&A into a podcast? But huge caveat, huge asterisk, I've never done a podcast, and I frankly don't have time right now to start a podcast, but maybe there's somebody out there watching who is an expert in starting podcasts. If you are, maybe you could email me your top like five tips for starting a podcast. I've never done it. Um, I love video production. I'm not, huge, I'm not as big on audio. So that's the question of the day. Should I consider starting a podcast? A lot of people were mentioning that last week uh, with last week's Q&A. Let's dive in, here we go. Question number one, Garrett on YouTube. Seth, have you ever considered doing a run vlog for dummies video uh, or something like that, like an episode where you go over my filming gear, editing software, etc., and what you look for in a good running shot? I think, and that would be a super helpful vlog. Garrett, I think that's a great idea. I've done some similar things about a year ago on um, how to basically start a YouTube channel, but I like the idea of connecting it more so to running. Garrett, just to give you a few little, uh, and everybody else, um, so I edit on a MacBook Pro. I edit with Final Cut Pro, not Adobe. I'm not, I have nothing against Adobe, but I have been in the Final Cut Pro ecosystem. That's the editing software for the videos uh, for years and years, and it's efficient, it's easy, and I love it. So there you go for that, Garrett. I love Canon for cameras. This is a Canon right here. I, I love the color of Canon. I think Canon captures color the best, in my humble opinion. And then what I look for in a good running shot, Garrett, great question. I personally, I think the best shots are the stationary shots, uh, not the moving shots. So where the camera is stable, but the subject is moving, okay? And the reason why is that allows you, the viewer, First of all, to not see shaking and movement and uh, it's like, you know, too much shaking, I don't like. But you can analyze my running form, uh, pick up on the clothing and the shoes that I'm wearing. Uh, I just really like those stationary shots that have great perspective, all right? So that depth of field in the shot. Oh man, we could get into it, Garrett, good question. I will put it on the list. I don't know when, but I'll put it on the list for a running a run vlogging for dummies video. Love it. Question number two from Lars on YouTube. Seth, have you considered measuring your threshold for VO2 max in a lab? Would be interested to know your results. Lars, I'd be very open. I think it costs a little bit of money. If somebody out there owns a lab that can test a VO2 max, I'd be very open to the idea. I've never done it, so I don't know what my VO2 max is. And that would be amazing. I think there's a lab up in Boulder, Colorado that does it. Anyway, if anybody out there has a lab, let me know. Lars, good question. Moving on, question number three. Brandon on YouTube, just a quick question about, do I slow jog in between my intervals during a workout? Uh, or, do I, or do I come to a complete rest? So, Brandon, I will just say, and everybody else, you don't wanna, you don't wanna bend over and slouch over in between intervals, no matter how hard you're breathing. You wanna try and stay upright and then just do this. Keep that chest cavity nice and open so you can get as much oxygen into your lungs as possible. And then I will walk around Brandon in a hard, hard workout for about 10 seconds. And then I will start slow jogging as quick as possible. Sometimes I just go right into jogging, but when it really hurts, it really hurts. And it's like that burning sensation or that kind of that copper. You guys ever had that before? Copper taste in your mouth when you're just that lactic acid taste. Um, so great question, Brandon. I, my preferred um, action is to jog. Good question. Okay, moving on to Josh on Strava. Seth, do you have any Gore-Tex trail shoes for the snow? I'm from Buffalo, New York, and we get a lot of snow. I'm going to try the Speedgoat 4 Gore-Tex. I hope they keep my feet dry, Josh on Strava. I actually don't have any Gore-Tex shoes. I do have one pair, but we just, again, even though we have a lot of snow right now, usually Denver stays overall pretty dry through the winter months. The mountains get quite a bit of snow, but Denver uh, is, does not get a lot of snow. So, but here's a couple ideas. 
on the Solomon Speed Cross 5. If you're looking for a more aggressive shoe, this is not the, the Gore-Tex option, but it does come Gore-Tex now. And uh, you know how much I love Solomon, but it is more aggressive. I would say if you live like in Vermont or you live in somewhere with like rolling hills and rolling dirt roads that are snow packed, I would go out for a run in the Solomon Speed Cross 5. And then the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail now has a Gore-Tex option. I might actually buy it. So today for my 13 mile run today, I wore the Pegasus 36 Trail on a bike path that was snow packed and I didn't slip once. And what I love about the Peg 36 Trail is the cushion. So I chose this guy today because I was running on hard concrete with a layer of snow. I did not slip at all. So the lug depth is about three to four millimeters. It's getting worn out now, but I didn't slip today. And it's just got that nice cushion. So that's another option for you. If you're looking for some real good ag aggression out there, the La Sportiva Tempesta GTX. I, wore, I put about 120 miles on this shoe in 2018, and it does have a stabilizer in there. Um, this is when I was dealing with plantar fasciitis in 2018. Anyway, I, I went back and forth and decided that the stabilized shoe was not actually helping my plantar fasciitis. But in the meantime, I did put a lot of miles in this La Sportiva Tempesta. It is Gore-Tex, but it is a very aggressive um, outsole pattern. So this would be more for the trails, I would say. And last, last but not least, the Adidas Terex Agravic GTX. I don't own that shoe, but I've heard good reviews about the Adidas Terex Agravic. If I'm saying that right, GTX. Thanks, Josh. Here we go. Moving on to James on Strava. Let me take a quick drink. Hold on. Got to stay hydrated. We're at altitude. It's dry here in the winter. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. James on Strava. And this is in reference to my 20 mile run that I did, I think on Wednesday. He asked, uh, was this your long run for the week? If so, what sort of pace do you try to go at? James, I do love seven minute pace for my long runs. Early in a training block, I will do about maybe like 720 to 730 a mile. And there it is in kilometers on your screen. Later in the training block when I'm feeling more fit, so in about three weeks from now, I will drop that down to 630 to 645 as long as I feel good. Um, and the body's feeling good. If not, no problem. I'll back it off to back to 730s again. And there it is again in kilometers. So James, good question. Uh, that would be my range. And again, you have to keep in mind, I'm at altitude. So everything is just a little different up here in altitude. All right. And this is actually another, so this is another question. This is from Stuart. Um, actually, yeah, we'll go with this one first. Stuart on Twitter, another shoe question. Hey Seth, looking for a bit of advice. I want a well padded shoe as I run mostly on pavement. I was keen to get a pair of Hoka's, but I hear they are not very wide in the toe box. Can you recommend a wide shoe with plenty of sole, please? Kind regards, Stuart on Twitter. Actually, Stuart, the Hoka Bondi 6 is a wider shoe from Hoka, and it's the most cushioned, well cushioned shoe I think that Hoka has. Um, so, the Hoka Bondi 6, spelled B O N D I, check it out. You maybe have already. Um, checked it out, but that's definitely an option. The Brooks Ghost 12, okay? The Saucony Echelon 7, check that one out. And then lastly, I wrote it down to, oh yeah, here we go. The Ultra Torin, this is not the plush, but the Ultra Torin 4 plush. I love, love, love this Torin for my recovery days. I don't run in it anymore, and I need to pick up another pair of Torins very soon. Uh, but I love the Torin, so that, but it is zero drop. So keep that in mind, Stuart. And I think the midsole material that they're using in the Torin lineup is awesome. I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, Stu, but again, it's zero drop. So if you're not used to zero drop, it might not work for you. And all four of those shoes are wider, especially the Brooks. What I have found through time is Brooks is always just a little wider footbed. Um, and what I, when I say footbed, uh, that is inside the shoe. So inside the shoe where your foot is literally resting on the bed of the shoe, uh, inside, inside, uh, yeah, inside. All right, moving on. Here we go. This is back to New York. Mike on Twitter, he says, I've been running about eight months, and this is a little repetitive, so I'll connect it back to the previous couple questions. Um, I'm looking for a winter running shoe for road and gravel trails, thinking uh, Hoka Speedgo 3, Mad River TR, Brooks Cascadia 13, Thoughts, Mike on Twitter. So he lives in Rochester. Lots of snow in Rochester and Buffalo. I feel for you. 
stay strong. You've got this. You can train outside. No treadmill in New York, right? So I personally, I love, love, love the Saucony Mad River TR value. Actually, I think... I think this is on sale for $88 right now. Saucony Mad River TR. It is down below. I saw it yesterday. I don't know if it's still on sale, but yesterday for $88. Amazing. This is going to go down as probably a top three trail running shoes of 2019 for me. Um, it is a little wider, actually. So back to the previous question, Stuart. Maybe not as much midsole um, uh, cushion as you would like, Stuart, but I love this shoe. This is not Gore-Tex. Uh, but it does have a lot of good draining built into the shoe, as you know. Um, and this is Mike on Twitter. If you wanted, and it depends on the type of snow you're running in. Of course, if it's like a really slushy, wet snow. I'm trying to think of like an urban, like a Philadelphia, I don't know, or Washington, D.C., or Kansas City, maybe. But where there's like a lot of slush, I don't know. You could drill holes in the bottom of the shoe and let the water drain out. So good question, Mike on Twitter. I also love the Hoka Speed Goat 4. I know you mentioned the 3. If you can find a 3 in your size and save a little money, I think that's great. Uh, but I am really loving the Speed Goat 4 inside. I didn't bring it out right now. All right, moving on. Love this, everybody. Hope you're enjoying this Q&A. I try to keep it as lively as possible. Um, let's keep rolling. Kevin on Twitter. A lot of questions on Twitter. I love it. Hi, Seth. Love the vlog. I'm new to foam rolling. Oh, here we go. And have watched your rolling episodes. When do you do your foam rolling? Only on off days, before workouts, after workouts. I'm finding different perspectives. So, Kevin, I am not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm just a runner. I'm not a physician, physician's assistant. I'm not a massage therapist. I'm just a runner trying to take care of my body and trying to make my body feel like I can function and then I can live and then I can get out of my bed in the morning. Because sometimes my legs are like, I don't know about you all, and probably as we all, you know, get a little older, it's like every day I'm like, okay, this is good. I can get out of, like, there's not a ton of pain. And then there's other days where I'm like, oh my goodness, it's going to take me 30, 45 minutes just to wake the body up by walking around the house. So, Kevin, I foam roll every day. And I use foam rolling to warm up the muscles before my run. And usually, not always, but usually before I start stretching, okay? Regular foam roller or the electric foam roller, do, will do, both will do the trick well. If it's the electric foam roller, which is inside, I use the lowest setting. And then when I get home for my run, I'll do more, more foam rolling. And if it's after a long run or a hard workout or I'm just tired, um, I will use the electric one on like um, level two, sometimes three. Three is probably too intense, but level two. And I'm telling you, just to loosen everything up, um, in fact, I'm going to go inside after this and foam roll and just to loosen everything up. And I just, it makes me feel so much better, Kevin. I don't know what else, what else to say. So I don't know what you're reading about differing perspectives, but I foam roll every day. Now, the trigger point, be careful. When I bought this in the spring of 2019, I could barely use this on my quads, on my glutes. It just, I dug in so much. It hurt so bad. But now I can barely feel these ridges. And this is like seven months later. So I probably use the trigger point two to three days a week. Um, and remember, my hip has been a little tight with the help of my massage therapist, stretching, uh, Epsom salt baths. And this guy, I do believe, my hip's feeling really, really good today. Now, we'll see how it feels tomorrow and the next day. But anyway, I hope that helps Kevin on Twitter. I do... I'm not afraid to foam roll. Now, I don't foam roll like my IT bands every day, um, which I know some people say don't do that. But uh, so anyway, thank you, Kevin. Great question. Moving on. Moby on YouTube. I love this question. How did you meet true love? All right, Moby, you nailed it. Great question. So we met in, oh boy, here we go, 2010. All right. Spring of 2010 at... An Irish pub in downtown Denver. Who's been to the Celtic in, in downtown Denver? It's actually moved. It moved locations, but we met at the old location. Um, it was a mutual friend's birthday party. I actually met True Love's sister first, who uh, she basically invited me to this birthday party and kind of actually, all right, here it goes, here it goes. Uh, I met Bridget's sister first at a house party and we were talking at this house party, you know, talked maybe for 10 minutes, I don't know. And she and Bridget, you know, true love, she likes to go to bed early. She likes, she's a homebody. And so 
she was not at this ha at this house party. So her sister leaves the house party, drives to Bridget, where Bridget's living, where they sh they lived in a, a carriage house in South Denver, and woke Bridget up at 1 a.m. and said, I just met your new best friend. What? So Bridget's sister uh, gets a lot of kudos because then she invited me uh, to this birthday party at the Celtic in downtown Denver like a week later. Bridget and I met there and Bridget's maiden name is Sweeney. And so she's a very Irish, passionate Irish lassie. And uh, that is how True Love and I met. Great question, Moby on YouTube. Oh, I love it. Okay, moving on. I know I'm going long here. I'm going to try and go a little more rapid here. Mind on YouTube asks, how do you feel about people under 18 running marathons or possibly even longer distances? I sometimes see age requirements for marathon signups. Uh, you must be over 18. And I'm curious what your take is on this. Mind on YouTube, I would say, and you know, like <laughs> I ran a half marathon, me as a, I think as a 13 year old. And I think 18 is not too early for a marathon, but now keep in mind, <laughs> mind is that your body is still developing. I believe, you know, your bone density is still developing. A lot of things are still developing as an 18 year old. So I would be careful. Um, I wouldn't completely discourage it, but I would just say mind that long term, you might have more fun if you hone in on speed at some shorter distances. I'm just putting it out there as a consideration. I bet you would enjoy half marathons, um, maybe like a, a 25K, so that's about 15 or 16 miles, and then just be patient and wait for that marathon distance. Just putting it out there, but I'm not totally against it. I don't think it's gonna ruin you, uh, ruin your bot now for like a under 15 year old to go run a marathon, like I probably wouldn't advise that. I'm just, I'm just gonna say that right now. All right, good question. Moving on, Michael on YouTube. Do you have any advice for someone wanting to start running 14ers or mountains in general? That's Michael. Good name, Michael. Michael, of course, we gotta start with hiking, right? We gotta make sure we can hike up a 14er. Um, I've, got, I've gotten this question before in the past um, from some actually friends here in Denver, and I just tell them like, listen, first we gotta hike. Let's make sure we can hike a 14er and at a pretty good pace. And then let's start mixing in the running. Um, Michael, I would also say, and I actually didn't really think this answer through, so this is just speaking off of the, speaking from my gut here, is uh, make sure you have the right equipment, the right shoes, you know, a vest to carry the water, carry the, you probably already own these items. Um, and then, I would recommend um, easy 14ers to start. So Quandary, or sorry, not Quandary, um, Beerstat, uh, probably Grays. You know how much I love Grays. And, um, and, okay, Michael, I'm just thinking as I go here, I would start by going halfway up the fort. Go to Treeline, okay? Say, t say to yourself, today I'm going to run to Treeline and then I'm going to hike the rest of the way. Or I'm going to hike to Treeline and then I'm going to run for a mile above tree line, and then I'm gonna hike the rest of the way. Just kind of break it up a little bit. You don't just have to go run it all in your first bout. Um, let me just think if I can give you one more tip, 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 tip is, make sure you pick the right weather pattern. You don't wanna get stuck in lightning up there. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there, Michael. Thank you for the question. Uh, you caught me off guard there a little bit. I, I hope I gave you what you were looking for, but it's a big topic. Bottom line, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun, everyone. If you can run from the trailhead to the top of a 14er without stopping. It's hard to do. I, I, I'm trying to think, yeah, when I first started, I could not really do it. It was, if I was doing it, it was very slow. But if you can get there, you know your fitness level is really high because it's really hard to do, but it's really fun. And it might be a slow, slow jog, but it's really fun to accomplish that goal. Okay, moving on. We're almost done. Doug on YouTube, Seth. Hey Seth, would it be sufficient to just put the Spenco on top of the insole? I'm reluctant to take out the insole of my Rincons. Rincons, Rincones, I think it's Rincons. Uh, considering they're glued on, Doug on YouTube. So here's my Rincons. Doug, you are correct. They, hold on here. And Doug, you probably remember, hold on, there we go. So I actually did pull mine out and the glue did come off. And Hoka, this is, this is ridiculous. This insole is 
Uh, I don't want <laughs> It's ridiculous. Look, it's paper thin. I don't know what you're doing. I'm trying to figure it out. You've got a lot of money. Put a better insole into your Rincons. It's like, absolutely insane. So, um, Doug, I think it is okay to put Spenco on top of the insole. Uh, but I would advise, if you can put it under, it just is going to be a little more snug fit. And some insoles have a little more uh, arch support built into them. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We're not going to pull that one out. That was the, uh, here we go. So like this Pegasus 36 trail has a little more um, arch support built into it. And I don't, I wouldn't want the spend code to take away from that little bit of arch support you might get there. So Doug, I pulled mine out I, of the Rincons and it, it did fine. So I think you could pull it out as far as um, even though it's glued down, and you'll be able to put that insole back in no problem. Oh, all right, last question. I, thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Hope you're getting some value out of this. Do you consider, oh my goodness, I should probably mention. So, Doug, for everybody, the, this is Spenco, this green extra padding that I put in a lot of my shoes just to help with a little bit of extra cushion, especially when you have paper thin insoles. Hoka, hoka. Okay, calling you out. Do you consider negative split pacing at all for your road marathons? That is from Jennifer on YouTube. Jennifer, I had that idea going into New York after my lesson in Amsterdam. It did not pan out. Um, um, oh my goodness. I'm spacing on his name right now. The gentleman I ran with, oh, not, I'm sorry, I'll put it on the screen. I'm so sorry, I can't remember his name. But anyway, Jennifer, I tried pacing with this gentleman and we went out a little slow and it's really hard, I think, to negative split. It's pretty, like some of the best marathon runners can, can even split really well. Negative split, I've never been a great negative splitter. So going into Houston, Jennifer, I am going like, <laughs> I want, and I got to talk to the pacing group that I'm going to be running with. I want like 108.45 or 109 or 109.15, like that 30 second window. I want to, I want to go out a little faster because I just know those last three miles, it's hard. Like I want a little buffer is, is what I'm saying, Jennifer. It's re for me, negative splitting, especially a marathon when you're hitting the wall, the last six miles, especially for me, the last three miles, Oh, it's hard. So good question, Jennifer. I hope that helps. That wraps up this week's Q&A. Feel free to email me or Instagrams. Just so you know, Instagrams get a little crazy. Uh, there's hundreds of messages there. I can't type fast. I just can't type fast enough. I'm doing my best. If I haven't gotten back, in, back to you, that is why. There you go. All right, everyone. We're going to toss it back to the right to last week's Q&A. And on the left, uh, that box on the left, click on that if you're going to want to go back to the live stream playlist where we go into a lot of different topics. There you go. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.